Hello and welcome to Alexpo. Right, it looks like Frank Lampard's Chelsea are title contenders this season, but only time will tell if they can live up to the hype. Well, unfortunately I can't wait that long, and I want to know what they'll look like in 2026. Oh, you do too? Great, then you've come to the right place. My name's James and this is Chelsea in 2026 according to Football Manager 2021. And if you like what you see, why don't you hit that subscribe button and tick the bell to make sure you never miss a video. Anyway, let's get into it. Sadly, the Blues didn't win the Premier League this season, well, sadly if you're a Chelsea fan, but have lifted the title during the simulation, winning the Premier League in 2024. But it wasn't Frank Lampard in charge, as the club legend got the sack in May 2023. FYI, he's now managing in the Championship. But back at Chelsea, and it took his replacement just one season to bring the good times back to Stamford Bridge, as new manager Julian Stefan won the double. He followed his first ever league title up with the 2024 FA Cup and he since added another trophy to the cabinet with his Chelsea side winning the 2025 League Cup. They've since dropped off though and have finished the 25-26 season in 4th place, narrowly securing Champions League football. On the final day they beat Southampton 1-0 with a much changed lineup. so let's have a look at who was in the team and which stars had been given a rest. In goal was Iñaki Peña. With nothing to play for, Chelsea made a change in between the sticks, with Spaniard and Nagy Peña getting a rare outing. He kept a clean sheet too, and ended the season with four clean sheets and seven appearances. Not bad really after a £20 million move from Barcelona. But shockingly, the Chelsea number one in 2026 isn't Eduard Mendy, in fact, it's Kepa. Yes, the calamity stopper has fought his way back at Stamford Bridge into the club's number one once again, and now he's a Premier League winner. It was only after Frank Lampard's departure that Kepa got back in favour, so clearly he just had a bit of an agenda. Right back was Fakayo Tomori. There was also a change at right back, as Fakayo Tomori was a bit of a makeshift option. I promise he hasn't just become the next Branislav Ivanovic. To be fair to Tomori though, it's only this season that he's really been out of the team, and he's always been excellent. However, he wants to move on, and Chelsea have set a huge asking price of £60 million. But Chelsea's usual right back is another familiar face, with Rhys James still flying up and down the flank at Stamford Bridge, and he's the captain now. The new Chelsea skipper has had an excellent season, although not his best, that came in 2022 when he got 11 assists. Trent who am I right? Chelsea have also got Joao Cancelo, but the poor bugger can barely manage to get on the bench. Centre half was Nuan Perez. Finally we've got someone who's actually been first choice this season. Well, kind of. Perez has been a rotation player, chopping and chaining with Fakayo Tomori, but with him on the way out, Perez can now be the main man. He'll need to improve a lot though, as his most recent season average was just 6.82, which for £58 million is far from impressive. Next up was Alessandro Bastoni. While Perez has been in and out of the team and a bit hit and miss, Alessandro Bastoni has been wonderful. He cost a huge £88 million and thankfully is a guaranteed starter under Julian Stefan. During his two seasons he's improved and hopefully he'll continue to do so as he's got a contract there until 2029. 88 million pounds was an expensive signing for Chelsea but it's not the club record, more on that in a moment. Left back we've got Mark Cucurella. Clearly someone watched my 8 players you must sign from La Liga video, check it out if you haven't already. The curly haired Spaniard has just completed his first season in the Premier League, I think it's fair to say it went pretty well. He got himself one goal and it was the winner in this game against Southampton. It could be the first of more to come, as it looks like Cucurella is going to be the first choice left back from here on out. That's because the usual first choice Ben Chilwell is on the transfer list. The England international refused to sign a new contract with his current one winding down, so Chelsea have got no choice but to cash in, as if it's a money in the bank briefcase. Real Madrid and PSG are chasing his signature, which tells you all you need to know about how good he's been during this simulation. Poor midfield was Javier Simons. For a second I thought this was the hot young prospect of PSG, Javi Simon. But no, this is a different guy, a lad on FM who's been pretty naff in a Chelsea shirt. Hold midfield seems to be a problem position for the Blues, despite them having a plethora of options there. Even N'Golo Kante is still knocking about, but he's 35 now, and hopefully just as nice. Other options include Sofian Amrabat and Jao Palinha, and the next player I'm going to talk about. Centre mid was Renato Sanchez. Yes, the legendary Swansea flop is back in the Premier League, and he's actually spent most of the simulation there. Sanchez was moved to Leicester initially, but in the summer of 2025 secured a £51 million move to Stamford Bridge. I'll be honest with you, it does not look like he's got over the South Wales nightmare. Like so many others in this team, he's been in and out of the side, showing just how much depth Julian Stefan's got. He was alongside Niall Humphrey. We've got a regen here, and a 19 year old who was making his Premier League debut. For a debut, it seemed to go okay, with an average rating of 6.7. I've seen better players do worse than that to be honest. 
But speaking of better players, Chelsea have got some great options in the middle, including the current Barca prodigy, Pedri. For £43 million, he's been a relatively cheap and impressive option either in the middle or out wide. But the real megastar of the midfield is Martin Odegaard. For years now, he's been a football manager icon, and on this simulation, he's Chelsea's record signing at £97 million. The Norwegian has of course been excellent, and is well worthy of being the only Chelsea player in this team to earn more than three hundred grand a week. Which is crazy. Like, imagine being paid that much money to kick a ball around once or twice a week. On the right was Hugo Gonzalez. The changes in the Chelsea team continue, as Hugo Gonzalez was making just his fourth Premier League appearance since arriving. And what an arrival it was, costing £52 million. Imagine costing that much money and only playing four games. The Spaniard looks to be like an absolute waste of money, but the same can't be said for Chelsea's usual right winger. The Blues have followed Tottenham and turned it with South Korean, and brought in a man who might rival Son Heung Min in years to come. Lee Kang In cost £92 million from Valencia, another expensive arrival, but at least the creative midfielder has actually played and contributed. This was his first full season in England, and the Asian superstar already looks to have settled, getting goals and assists from midfield. On the left was Timo Werner. We've got a current Chelsea man on the left wing, but a player who's actually struggled throughout the simulation. In reality, he's been hit and miss, he scored some great goals and played well, but he also cleared one of his own line against Leeds. But in this FM simulation, he hasn't really scored as many as you'd expect. He's mainly been a substitute this season, as Chelsea's main left winger is Christian Pulisic, who in 2026 is a target for Barcelona after just enjoying one of his best seasons ever. And up front was Luka Jovic. Leading the line on the final day for Chelsea was another backup option, another expensive one at that. Luka Jovic has been in and out of the team all year after a £61 million arrival from Real Madrid, but he's done okay, getting himself seven Premier League goals. However, he spent most of the year playing second fiddle to a striker who cost even more money but scored a lot more goals. Well, five more. Darwin Nunes is the number nine at Stamford Bridge, a Uruguayan striker who got £72 million and has had a lot of money spent on him since he left South America. In 2026, there's no Olivier Giroud, with the glamorous Frenchman finally getting the move away from Stamford Bridge that's been talked about ever since he arrived at the club. For the love of God, stop calling him underrated. Who are these people that don't rate him? So there we go, that's Chelsea in 2026 according to FM21. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexport. And until next time, we will see you around.